your excavator bucket wobbles like this, it might be time to add some shims. In this service call, Sean will show you how to install shims on this John Deere 85G. Welcome to Service Call, a mechanics guide to service, troubleshooting and repair. You can see here, this has been shimmed before, but it was done incorrectly. The shimming should always be divided equally from one side to the other. It's just good practice. Kind of makes like you care about the work that you do. This here looks like it was done last minute because both shims are put in on one side. So we're going to distribute that across because the thumb actually doesn't have much play between the, it and the coupler. So it has the correct amount of shims. We're just going to spread them. Put one on one side and one on the other. Just hold them up. Kind of like a display like Okay. Or okay. So the tools that we're going to use for this job, a hammer and drift for knocking the pin out. But instead of using that, what I'm going to be using, and I'll just be driving it out like this. Quite effective. Get a lot of force out of that. And for taking the wedge coupler off, I'm going to use a flex bar to break it loose if I need to, and then a ratchet just to spin it out the rest of the way. So the reason why you would shim this sort of thing is uh, to reduce premature wear between, you know, like your coupler here and the end of your stick. They kind of slam together and rub and stuff, and it tends to wear that out. So if you put shims in there, it takes up that space and there's no room for it to move side to side. You may also find that when you're operating the machine and you stop swinging, you'll find your bucket moves a lot and it makes it kind of difficult for finer control. You kind of want your bucket to stop moving around when you, when you stop moving. So what we're going to be doing first is we're going to remove the bucket and then once we've done that, we'll be able to uh, see the, the set screw that is in here that retains this pin. So then we'll be removing that. Set everything down nice and level, and we want everything to stay lined up as much as possible. If you're really ambitious and you had access to a welder, which I'm going to assume those of you who are watching this do not, you could weld a bar across wedge coupler to the stick here, and from the thumb to the stick here, just with good solid tacks, not a good solid weld. You want to be able to break this off afterwards. It keeps everything in alignment so you really don't even need to work on the ground. But again, assuming not everybody has that, uh, we're gonna do it on the ground. All right, so to start, we're gonna remove these two bolts here and remove the wedge coupler. But first, I'm gonna position the bucket uh, where I'm gonna take it off so that I don't need to move it around afterwards. Normally, I would like to see a lock washer underneath this to help maintain tension on the bolt. There aren't any on this. Let's see if I have some on the truck that'll fit. Anytime you're striking something, the proper PPE would be eye protection, gloves. If you're going to be doing it for a really long period of time, I would recommend hearing protection. Now I'll uncouple the bucket. So right now I'm going to leave it at this height because this is a good working height. So because uh, this roll pin is located directly beneath this link, it, it's going to make it difficult to get a good straight hit on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to curl the bucket in and I'll have better access to this pin to drive it out. There we have it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and set this on the ground so that, they're, so that the ground is fully supporting the coupler and the thumb. That way when I drive the pin out, ideally nothing will really move. And then I'll be able to put the shims in, line the pin up, and knock it back in with relative ease. 
So I kind of quickly clean this up here. So what this is, this is a roll pin, also known as a spring pin. So it's called a roll pin because it's pin in appearance and it was rolled out of a single piece of steel. But it's also called a spring pin. And the reason why it's called a spring pin is because the ends are tapered and when this is pushed inward, it wants to go out. Like it's made of uh, uh, like a spring steel, kind of like a, like a leaf spring in your vehicle. It has a, a tendency to want to retain its shape. So when this is compressed, it doesn't want to compress, it wants to stay expanded so it forces outward, which holds it in the bore. Alright, so now that everything is sitting nicely on the ground, it may drop slightly, but it, this is a pretty light machine. The coupler is pretty light and manipul uh, we're able to manipulate it quite easily. Same with the thumb. But I, I have contact here and at the tines, and then there's uh, contact with the coupler there. So it really shouldn't move very much at all. So now I take our big wrecking bar and I'm going to drive that pin out. Well, as you can see, it didn't really stay in position, but like I said, it's pretty lightweight and we can manipulate it quite easily, so I don't feel that this is going to be an issue at all. So here are the two shims that were placed on one side. When we get to this side, I will put this one on here. For, for now, we'll put this over here. Okay. So, put the shim in on this side. There we go. So the pin is through the shims and holding the shims in place. And now being, like I said, it's a pretty light application. You can just lift the uh, coupler up into position. Now, Unfortunately, I need to move everything so that it lines up with the end of the stick. So for that, I'm actually going to have to try and pry everything that way. So I think we have enough room on the coupler to fit, or between the coupler and the arm, I think we have enough room for uh, one thick and one thin shin shim on each side. Looks like we might just get one thick one on this side. Uh, a little more. Okay, I think that's got it. Is that all? Yeah, I think that's it. So now, go to the other side. There's not quite enough room to get in here. So we could use a pry bar to push it over or hold it in place. Sometimes just a tap of the hammer is all you need. Okay, looks like that one's good. So now we'll just drive it through there. Just gonna make sure it's through the shim. And it looks like it is. Okay, now I'll drive it through a little further and we'll get this shim in. So one more thing I'll show you too is in the event that you didn't line up the hole when you drove the pin in, you will need to turn it to line that up. So what we do in that situation is drive it through till we could expect to see that hole, knock it back in a small amount that way, and then you can just see the edge of the hole, and then you get on it with a pipe wrench and you turn it a little bit till you can see where the hole lines up and then finish driving the pin through. So for now, 
Uh, I'm going to line up the coupler and get this shim in. It's never a good idea to use a hammer on a screwdriver, but as you may have noticed from one of my previous videos, I have a lot of screwdrivers, so I don't mind doing this. Looks about right. We are through the shims. Just need to line the cup or the thumb up a little bit and we'll drive it in till we can expect to see the hole. Then we'll drive it back out a tiny bit and I'll turn the pin till the hole lines up. We'll drive it in. Out there so that's where we should be able to see the hole and I do not just knock it back a little bit so we have a little meat on the other side to be able to turn it or we could actually be even easier would be to drive it through so it's a little extra far out that side and then that way I don't need another person to line it up so I'm using a 24 inch pipe wrench you don't really need to use a 24 inch pipe wrench as long as you have some means of getting on the pin and turning it. And I would suspect we would see some sign of the hole here soon. Oh, there it is, there it is. Lining punch. There we go. Centered and ready for the roll pin. It's going to be difficult to get a decent swing on it. So I'm just going to keep this, this punch in place to make sure that the coupler and the pin spin together. I'm going to lift it up, roll the coupler forward, and then drive the roll pin back in. So you can see on the end of the roll pin here, it's got a little bit of a taper. This side would normally also, but it's been hammered on, so the taper is no longer there. So we're going to put the tapered end in first because it's going to make our job a lot easier. And then we just hammer it in. Right there, we're about flush. All right, well. There you have it, shimming complete. So, typically what you do anytime you pull the pin like that, especially if you're cleaning the pin off, you grease the front end. Um, so I'm gonna do that at the end of all this anyway. I'm just gonna grease this whole front section. Not quite so clunky. Well, there you have it. My name is Sean, and I shim sh. If you want to know how to shim sh too, like, comment, and subscribe. If you want information on tracks, lubricants, and filters, visit FortisHD.com. Here I come to save the day.